Updates to the DX Mini Hotspot today on Ham Radio 2.0. Before we get started, do you want to see something that's really kind of fun? Mega Man 3. How about Galaxian? Oh my god! <laughs> anyway, I uh, I let this thing run, uh, charge it up all night. It is uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below, of course. It is I think it's eight thousand amp uh milliamp hours. I believe that's what it is. The writing on the back of it is very kind of. It's like it's sun faded or something. It came that way, but it's called game. Po yeah, game power capacity eight thousand milliamp hours. So it's not going to be a great. In fact, the reason I got this is because it's it's very similar to the size that goes in the back of the flex radio. But then I got it and figured out I could power my hotspot with it. I let this hotspot sit. I charge this thing up fully, and let the hotspot sit for about twenty four hours. Um, and it died at like maybe 22 hours, 23. I put it on there one night at like 6 p.m. I looked at it the next morning. It was still on. And I looked at it throughout the day, and it died somewhere around 4 o'clock. So it was on to like 22, 21, maybe 22 hours, somewhere in there. So really great option if you want to go portable. And, of course, if you, the more games you play, <laughs> the less time your hotspot will stay active. Hey guys, uh, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. This is your first time to join us here. Please click on the subscribe button below and give us a thumbs up on that on uh, this video so that you can keep up with all that's done on this series. Lots of stuff that's new in amateur radio. All right, so DX Mini is um, one of my favorite hotspots that's out right now. I get asked a lot. Hey, if you had to pick a hotspot right now, which one would it be? And if it was going to be a Pi Star hotspot, this is definitely my answer right here. Um, right up here on this video, I will put a link here uh, about the first video I did on DX Mini. There's been several updates to it since then, several updates on Pi Star, uh, several updates on uh, the actual DX Mini uh, interface itself. So let me. Uh, this is video is going to be pretty short and sweet here. Let me go through and switch over to this view right here. Uh, these are the two DX Mini hotspots. This one here, of course, is a <clears throat> single time slot on a Pi Zero board with a smaller screen. That one you can see. Now this one sets up right to where if I turn the camera like this and you see like it sits on the desk like this. So the screen is pointed kind of like 45 degree angle towards you. And this one here, which is uh, this, this, uh, this guy right here, which of course is a dual time slot. And then this guy is a single time slot, traditional uh, time slot two. Of course, all of the, both of these will work on uh, Fusion and D-Star as well. This is, <laughs> I'll show you all what I did here. I put up a bunch of radio boxes so I could get closer to it. Because what it does is it washes out the screen 
on, uh, let me move this out of the way, put this back down here. I'm going to switch back to this view. And the screen's all washed out. You can't really see it. So the camera can't, uh, and I was trying to jack with the camera, but these are just these little webcams. They're not really made for extreme uh, conditions like this. So put that up there. And then it uh, fills the frame. Okay, so that's what the, that's obviously, that's what the screen looks like. This is the single time slot version. And it's got touchscreen options to it now. Now, these are the, these are the updates that were done since my last video. Um, I had uh, Jason, W9DXM, who uh, builds these hotspots out of McKinney, Texas, uh, do these updates for me at Hamcom in June. Uh, and you can go in here and, I can touch that little icon there, and I can adjust screen brightness. Just like that. Oh, there we go. That helps a little bit with the camera. You see the reflection on it. Just like that. And there's the uh, information. But DX Mini Touch version 1.0. And there you go. And the coolest thing about, I guess, uh, I guess I reset it when I was tinkering around with it. The coolest thing about this hotspot, in my opinion, is that it's got that, um, it, it'll tell you the IP on the bottom of it right there. So these, a lot of these touchscreen hotspots will tell you information you need to know. So it, you know what IP it's pulling as long as you know which, uh, which, um, network is connected to if you know if you if you know it's connected to your home network if you connect to pi star as an ap as a access point and then uh, connect to it with your phone your tablet or something as an access point and go into 192.168.50.1 it'll pull up the pi star menu and you can go in there to configure and scan ambient wi-fi connect to a wi-fi network and then it'll disconnect in from ap mode and come up to your wi-fi network and when it does that it will come up and it will give you an IP address for your network that you're connected to there. Let's hop over here to the Pi Star screen. Uh, this is dashboard. Let me zoom this in a bit for you guys. There we go. Dashboard version 2019-0709, which means it's July 9th is the date of the dashboard. Uh, this is uh, when I said I was talking about AP mode a minute ago. If I click there. Actually, that's the wrong one. Uh, I had two of these running a second ago. Let's go here, 32. There we go. That's the one that I was just showing you. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay. So, right here. Okay, there. Lose my mouse between these two monitors. Okay, so now we're going to go configuration. Pi Star is your username. Default password is Raspberry. And if you come in here to AP mode, you'll be connected. And then you can, uh, if you have an AP mode, if, if this was connected in AP road right now, the interface status would be shown here in red. Instead of interfaces up, it would say interfaces down in red. And then you can <clears throat> configure Wi-Fi and you can scan for networks and then you can save this is these are all the networks I currently have saved you can click on saved and connect and it will connect to whatever your ambient network is <clears throat> uh, and then you can go back into the dashboard here and see the activity if there is any activity uh, there's not anything happening on that talk group right now let's take a look at the I want to take a look at the other one here I'm gonna move back here here for a moment and I'm gonna I'm, I don't want both of these connected at the same time if you've ever listened to like TAC 310 before they disconnected it from Brandmeister well before they made changes to it on Brandmeister have you ever heard a bunch of people that would key up and maybe throw out their call sign or ask a question and then it would loop over and over and over again that comes from someone having two hotspots on the same frequency online at the same time so, 
be careful with your hotspots. You can have two hotspots, just put them on different frequencies. Or now in PyStar, you can change color codes. Do that. You want to do one for DMR on this network and one for DMR on this network, have them on the same frequency, change color codes. So that when one keys up, it won't interfere with the other one. Uh, let's go back here. Now this one here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in. These aren't on the same frequency anyway because I have the dual time slot set for a, an offset, which is not... Um, you don't set offsets in the single band or single time slot. Now this one's not touchscreen at the time of this video, but the touchscreen for this larger one is coming. Of course, this one is a full Pi 3B board, 3 plus B board. Uh, micro USB connector in the back. For, yeah, there's focus. Micro USB connector in the back uh, for standard power, just like uh, most Raspberry Pis are. And PyStar.local. So it's at a weird angle, so I can't get it all the way focused. And these are just little webcams. But, uh, you know, it shows your call sign, what ID I'm using, MMDVM idle, the date, the time. And that bottom line right there is your IP address, which is the same thing on the other other Pi Star 2. And then if I come down, so that's at 133, so I'm going to come over here and go to 133 on this screen. Which is right, yeah, right there. And you will see the 444.5125 and uh, receive is on 445.5125 which is your offset. Same login info. Same uh, same version at the top too. Uh, 0709 July uh, 9th version of PyStar dashboard. And this one's running in duplex repeater mode. Or half duplex on hotspots. So this is the setting you would put a PyStar on if you were um, connecting a PyStar to an actual repeater to change an analog repeater to an MMDVM repeater for either DMR, uh, D-Star, Fusion, whatever. So that's where that would be for that. So those are, <laughs> move this out of the way here. Out of the way there, there we go. So that's the BX Mini. Uh, updates to the touch screen on the, uh, the, the, the smaller version and the, uh, uh, just updates to the screen information on the larger version and touch screen is coming for this version. These use Nexion screens. Uh, they're fa fairly easy to find, uh, information on, on, uh, like Google and Amazon and whatnot and whatever. So anyway, dxmini.com. I recommend these. They're easy to work with, uh, great customer service. And you can get a single time slot or a dual time slot. If you don't care about DMR, if you want to use your, your uh, hotspot for Fusion or D-Star, then this is really all you need. This one's probably going to go in my truck on a, uh, on a permanent basis. Mount this in my truck, put it in there, power it micro USB to a cigarette lighter adapter, and that'll be my mobile hotspot uh, for regular drive time. So 73, let me know uh, who's using one of these, what you think about them. Put a uh, note in the comments below. See you guys next time.